Okay, guys and girls, today you'll be glad to hear that we are back on the Megan Ragland Markle roller coaster. And I'm back on that ride with a nasty, sick feeling on my stomach because this is getting out of hand. And the longer this is allowed to continue, the worse and more unfair it is becoming. I made a short video titled Markled just the other day with regards to One Young World. But of course, they are just one of many who had mysteriously developed issues soon after Megan or then the Harkles became involved. Like indeed now also the Mermaid charity, but we'll talk about that one later. We saw Netflix shares and subscriptions tumble in July this year, Netflix reported a loss of 970,000 subscribers in the previous quarter. And now in September, a survey of among 1,000 adults showed that 25% were considering planning or on the process of cancelling their subscriptions. The reasons given were rising cost of subscriptions, which was about 40%, inflation and affordability, 20%, quality or lack of content, 22%, and then 18% for other reasons. Now it appears Spotify is going the same route. Spotify's stock was down 20.2% in September, and by today, the 12th of October, has dropped another 4.47%. On the 7th of September 2022, the share price was $112 per share, but today it stands at $82.13, which is a significant loss, no matter how Spotify tries to spin it. Spotify has one other major problem, which Netflix does not have, namely that just 31% of Spotify's users are paying subscribers. But that 31% accounts for 87% of their revenue, thus losing only a handful of those paying subscribers would have a massive impact. This places Spotify in a very precarious position. I'm not anywhere near a financial advisor or creative director or whatever, but I think it is common sense that Spotify in particular should or needs to carefully consider and evaluate their content if they wish to continue to exist and prosper. So, with that being said, that brings us to someone like Megan. There are two types of people watching her Archetype podcast. Those who watch to criticize and keep record of her ridiculous stories and lies, and those who are the sycophants, the die-hard fans. I have not dissected all of Megan's podcast so far, but I think it is time we start to tally up the bullshit she's putting out there and spreading as fact. Because in my opinion, it is rather dangerous and shows her for exactly who she is and puts a glaring spotlight on her mental illnesses. In the last podcast, she talks about the terms crazy, hysterical, nuts, insane, out of your mind and completely irrational. She actually says that she had been called all of those things. And somehow, I don't doubt it. Not for a minute. We have all by now heard of her behavior on certain occasions. Throwing tea, bullying staff, and so on and so on. And of course, the worst of it all, her incessant lying or compulsive lying, most of which had been proven with receipts. So yes, a lot of what we know is not normal behavior. But firstly, I think the reason she chose this topic 
first and foremost is because of her wish to be seen as Diana 2.0. We have heard Diana say in more than one interview that courtiers and those loyal to Charles were keen to spread the rumour that she was unstable, crazy, irrational or hysterical. So first and foremost, it is my opinion that like Diana, Meghan want to plant the narrative that those who are against her are planting these labels on her. However, unlike Diana, who at some point acknowledged some of her issues and worked on resolving them, Meghan, at 41, refuses to and will not ever acknowledge her fundamental problems. But instead, she will seek out every other possible excuse in the book for her bad behavior and will always blame her issues and shortcomings on others. And we see that and have to understand that that is exactly what she is doing when she says, let's call it what it is emotion because that's it it's just the emotional experience of something scared sad angry stressed jealous surprised worried take your pick calling someone crazy or hysterical completely dismisses the experience while well, megan could not have been more wrong. And obviously, she is actually minimizing true mental health issues here, doing exactly what she is accusing everyone else of doing. We all get scared, and depending on the level of fear or the circumstances of the cause, we react to that fear and according to the circumstances. For instance, we had a snake in the house once and it slithered under a cupboard and while we were hunting for it, the lights went out and we were left in the dark with one candle. So first thing I did was close the doggies in one of the bedrooms and then we climbed onto my huge dining room table to get our feet off the floor in the dark and we stayed there until the power came on. Now that is normal, rational fear with a normal reaction. However, if I was to close my dogs in the bedroom every day because I fear that a snake may come into the house, that would be irrational and obsessive. And we see this irrational and obsessive behavior and trait in Megan. One example being her withholding her children from the public eye, for instance. As far as I'm aware, there had so far been no threat of physical harm against those children. Yes, we would all like to have a bodyguard or a policeman watching over us every minute of every day, but it is not feasible or rational, is it? Megan and Harry may have more money than us and they may be a little more famous but they are not the richest or the most famous either. Have they had potential intrusions on their property? Maybe. But you know, so have I and so have thousands of people all over the world and yet we deal with it. And don't expect 24-7 police protection afterwards. Has someone said something to Meghan and Harry on occasion which was perhaps a little off colour or not acceptable? Likely yes. But most of us here had similar incidents at least once during our lifetime. We often perhaps come across people who are not mentally stable without even knowing it. I personally was held at gunpoint once after, as part of my job at the time, 
I served an eviction notice alongside an attorney to one of my employer's tenants. Did I expect 24-7 police protection afterwards? No. But Megan is using fear or being scared as an excuse for her entitled behavior and as an excuse for her irrational behavior. The same applies to every other word she uses here. Most of us had experienced anger, but did we throw a vase or a cup of hot tea as a result of that anger? We get stressed or maybe even jealous, but do we bite or scratch each time we experience that emotion? Do we run to the media outlets and slander the person whom we are jealous of? No, because there is normal emotion and then there is abnormal reactions which could point at mental illness. A bit further into the interview with Constance Wu, Megan once again falls back onto something she has by now said about a hundred times when she says, but that's part of the double standard, right? For women who are striving to be successful, have a successful career, oh my gosh, she must be calculating or have some agenda. Well, why is Megan so fixated, so obsessed with making this statement at every possible opportunity. After all, I know men who are absolutely calculating and who have agendas and some not such nice agendas. Then I know men and women who have worked very hard for their measure of success, who had studied for years, worked two or even three jobs, who had fallen and made mistakes but got back up and tried again until they reached their goal. Yes, they often had to make choices and calculate their chances and options, but were not necessarily calculating in the sense that they made these choices with the intention of harming others or regardless of others. We all have agendas, no matter what we decide to do. But in the world of a normal person, that agenda is called a goal. So why is Megan making the words calculating and agenda sound like swear words? Is it because she herself applies a more devious meaning to these words. Well, it indeed appears to be the case because she is obsessed with it. Then Megan again launches into, I can remember when I'm in high school. My goodness, Megan seems obsessed with stories from high school. As so far, in every podcast, she has related an experience from high school. Why? Is it because she knows or thinks that because it is so long ago, we can't debunk those stories? Or is it because her maturity level got stuck and she has not grown emotionally since high school. And then Megan puts her foot in it. Oh my, oh my, she says. And even then, it doesn't mean that it's going to be the same every day, right? Like some days, I have complete clarity and the next day, I feel different. I think Social media sometimes doesn't help with that. But I, I, look, I haven't been on social media for a long time. Firstly, 
Megan either does not have a good grasp on English or she just admitted to being mentally unstable. Yes, our emotions or mood may change from day to day. But once we get clarity on a certain issue or matter or subject, then that is it. We understand it, we have figured it out and may have made peace with it or accept it or know what to do with it or how to deal with it. And that is it. It is independent of our emotions or moods. For example, I am a moody person. I am emotional and although it is more under control now, I suffer from depression. When I started this channel, I knew I have issues, physical and mental issues. I had just recovered sufficiently from a TIA to hold together a conversation. I knew that on good days, my speech flows easily and on days when I'm not feeling well or am tired, I may slur my words a little. On good days, I speak a little faster. And on less good days, I speak a little slower. I also knew that English is not my home language. So I expected some criticism. I had been on YouTube for a while and saw how people criticized one of my favorite YouTubers, Mike of the Chapter, for saying tree instead of three. I love Mike and at home my daughter calls Mike my Irish son. Anyway, so I expected that and was prepared to accept it and move on. But then things popped up that I did not expect. Some fear unadulterated hatred and vile comments. At first it made me angry and upset, but then something happened and one person took it too far, a bit further than just words, and did something which required action. During this process, I got the help I needed and it was soon sorted out. So this opened my eyes and gave me, yes, you guessed it, clarity. I realized that I'm indeed exposing myself to people from all walks of life, even though I may feel safe in my own home behind my computer. So with this clarity came the realization that I have to treat these negative actions according to a certain classification. If it is criticism of me, my speech, my accent, or even my opinion, it is okay. I may not like that person's way of talking, accent, or opinion either, and for all I know. But if somebody threatens my physical well-being, threatens my children, my grandchildren, my pets, or my livelihood, then I'm going to hand it over to those authorities who are better equipped than me to evaluate, assess, or act on it. Done. In my mind, I used this moment of clarity to create these little boxes and categories in which I place these negative reactions. And if I find it a little intrusive or rude or critical, I check it out, see whether I can do something to make it better. If not, it goes into a box, I put a lid on it and pack it away and forget about it. If it is something which could be potentially harmful to me or others and I can't deal with it, I give it to someone who can. That is a decision which came from a moment of clarity. A decision which is not going to change according to my mood. It is what it is, done and dusted. So if Megan talks about clarity, 
and changing her mind or reacting differently the next day to something she had clarity on the previous day, then I'm afraid she does not understand the meaning of the word clarity or her brain is so scrambled and disorganized that she is constantly second guessing herself and constantly going around in circles in which case she needs help before she spins out of control however megan not only exposes her convoluted mind in the statement but also the fact that she is indeed on social media yes she tries to correct herself when she realizes what she said but it was a little late <laughs> why else would she even say social media doesn't help with that if she wasn't even on social media even worse than that megan exposes herself even more when constance relates the story surrounding her suicide attempt and starts to cry megan's reaction no it's fine when constance explains why it still makes her cry megan's reaction hmm. and then megan continues to mm -hmm, yeah and then the cliche because this is part of your healing process this is part of it good lord i have not in my 59 years on this earth experienced that much coldness in anyone no emotion whatsoever but you see not only are her words cold but megan loves to twist that knife just a little bit more and deeper almost as if she gets some kind of satisfaction out of someone else's pain yes she says but really the craziest thing in the world would be to keep all of that inside so this you right no i mean i think it's i think it's beautiful oh my word beautiful beautiful to see someone in pain beautiful to see someone cry you must be kidding me but at least she then admits that she is devoid of the usual human emotions when she says i would love to cry this much but i'm conditioned to still have some and then she interrupts herself a different kind of composure and if you think this doesn't prove that she has no compassion or depth then link it to what she says next oh my god i want to do that i want to feel so deeply yeah guys she is admitting that she cannot feel deeply and yes when someone tells you something about themselves believe them and megan just told us she is incapable of feeling deeply thus no empathy or compassion believe her she could not have stated it any more clearly okay guys so i think this is enough in the next video we'll talk about the second act and in the same breath we'll talk about all the other porkies megan told in episodes one to four of her podcast so until we meet again on that one please take good care of yourself bye